Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're obviously all involved in podcasting, and, and it seems to be the the, the way that the information is getting to the masses now. And I, I certainly, you know, uh, take in hours of podcasts a day because I still do a fair bit of driving. What's your thoughts? Obviously, you know, we're all doing it. Um, that information, particularly, you know, obviously we've got the Joe Rogan thing going on in the states, and I have the unfortunate. Um, addiction to american politics now which is just doing my head in it's so much more exciting than ours though isn't it (laughs) it really is and it's that's probably why i don't have any hair left because i keep yelling at the radio i'm finding that a lot of the journal journalists in the states and certainly obviously cnn losing you know what 90 percent of their audience they seem to be employing activists and not journalists Mm. what are your thoughts yeah well i think one it's the pot calling the kettle black isn't it Mm. like I think it's just, it's, it's obviously, it's so obvious that you're know, trying to character assassinate someone because they're garnering more attention than your entire network. And the fact that Joe Rogan's podcast and he's a MMA comedian, uh, stereotypically you'd think bonehead, even though obviously not because yeah. he's doing something extremely high level, but that's a, a single individual like that can have more power and more influence and a bigger platform than all of the news networks, then it sort of seems like they might want to take him out. <laughs> yeah. it, it's kind of looking that way. It's like, so what's your motivation here? I think that's pretty obvious, right? No one watches, wants to watch the news because they want to watch someone actually talk about what they truly believe for hours rather than 90 seconds where they asked for a yes or no or they put in a specific box and they can't actually explain themselves yes um and i think there is a swing towards that sort of content because we want to actually see what a, who the person is and what they really think and you just can't do that in a few minutes and that's the same for the talent as well like the people who go on authors or uh film producers or um, experts they they want to speak at length as well because these concepts and these life experiences can't just be summed up in a couple of minutes. So I think they're trying to grapple with that and the fact that they can't really challenge that. Um, and, yeah, saying that Joe Rogan should be cancelled for spreading misinformation, well, then cancel <laughs> yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Correct. You know, it's just I seem I, I find it hilarious that they're saying that that he's you know increasing the divide or or, or you know creating division, and I'm like, uh, no, nah, hang on. <laughs> I would say he he is one of the only sources not doing that. I mean, other than a lot of other podcasts, he's doing the opposite. And the reason that I love Joe Rogan and what he represents, despite his flaws, hmm. is that he. He absolutely believes in the necessity of showing both sides of an argument. Yes. And and having everyone's views reflected. And he will talk to everyone and give them a platform whether he agrees with them or not. And he is always open to having his mind changed. And he wants to dig into why people believe what they believe. And then also tries to push them to actually back that back up what they're saying. Mm. And there's no, there's never any agenda of okay, Joe Rogan just said this is what we should all believe and this is right and this is wrong. He simply is a a largely objective platform, which is what the news is supposed to be, that presents both sides and then, hey, you have to actually work it out for yourself. That's what the news is meant to be. It's like, hey, here is this argument and this argument. These people who are qualified think this. These people think that. And uh, you can just do your research and, and you choose what, what side you're on. Absolutely. And then I agree with you with the, a lot of the news networks in America. So obviously having an agenda, they're actually a lot more like, well, say this, yes or no, agree with us. Um, if you are against us, then you're the enemy. You're spreading misinformation, telling people how to think on the right and the left, yeah. saying this is the truth. Not saying, well, it might be the truth. It's probably somewhere in between. There's this side, there's this side. There's a lot of things to consider here. We can't really just narrow it down. They're the ones going, yes, we can. In three minutes, it's this. 
I just don't want it to see. Do you see it? That's, that's that real partisan, you know, uh, point scoring even coming into Australian media. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I see no reason why it couldn't. We love following America. <laughs> we certainly do. Would we be brave enough? Are we bold enough? Well, I, I think it. You know, it comes down comes down to money and, and influence, doesn't it? True. I mean, if yeah, if there was, I know obviously Joe Rogan is global, but if there was a an Australian platform very significantly influencing our politics here, then it would be interesting to see what happens, um, because obviously Australia is not mentioned all that much with with Joe Rogan, and there's not like a platform that big that's governing that much attention. Uh, but yeah, I think it could potentially happen because it's all about power and influence and, and votes and money. So yeah, it's not a problem for our parties here. Yeah. But yeah. If it was. A lot of the podcasts in, in the States specific, and specifically a lot of the um, centrist sort of left leaning, you know, your, your Tim Pools or your, even um, oh, yeah, even Shapiro and Crowder, they're all saying, oh, yeah, it's pretty shitty in, in the States, but at least we're not Australia. <laughs> and I'm like, huh. oh, no, that's the perception. And it, I, I would like to see a, a press gallery um, have far more pushback on these people and be be the traditional devil's advocate and say, okay, even if I don't, even if I agree with what you're saying, I'm going to push back because here's the opposing argument and get to that you know and i guess you can't do yeah. that in a, you can't do that in a minute 20 news segment i understand that so should the you know should the format change do we need a a, a cnn but a, a a a news network that that has people on that does long form would, would that yeah. would, you, would you think yes. it would work yeah. yeah i mean these, these these networks have to come up with 24 hours of content a day like, mm. it would probably be easier for them as well to let some of the shows run on a bit longer uh but i think part of the reason that that doesn't happen is because if you're talking for two hours, three hours, it's pretty hard for it not to get natural and candid, right? And it's pretty hard not to say something that someone could cut out and say, hey, you said that, <laughs> right? Which is obviously what podcasting is all about. It's not perfectly scripted. It's not necessarily agenda and getting everything perfect, which you can do in three minutes but try to get that person to talk for three hours, they're going to seem like a human being and you're going to probably find out a lot more about them. And there's a lot of people who probably don't want to show that. I can guarantee. I can't imagine um, Mark McGowan or Daniel Andrews going onto a, a hostile network and sitting down for talking to them than, for more than three minutes because I think you would you find out you can fake it for two minutes, you can fake it for 15 minutes. As soon as you get past that half an hour, baby, <laughs> the real you comes out. And it doesn't need to be hostile. Like the other side doesn't even need to obviously have the opposite opinion to you. The beauty of a show like Joe Rogan's is someone talks for three hours and they're not being shut down. They're just being prompted. They're being challenged. You're going to be able to work out if that person's an idiot or not. Yes. Mm. You don't need the reporter or the host to tell you, you'll be able to figure that out. You can say, Oh, I like this part of their argument. I like the way they talk about that. I don't agree with that. And yeah. that is one of the things that I think is rubbing off from the news and the media into general society, especially in the U S but here as well is our inability to consider other opinions other than our own and our, our very vehement adherence to a particular argument needing to define our identity, but especially something like being an anti-vaxxer or being a vegan or having a, just any particular strong opinion about something yeah. and saying, meeting someone else and saying, if you don't agree with me about this one thing, then I'm not going to consider anything else you have to say and I'm just going to write you off as a person. Mm. Yeah. And that is hectic. We should yeah. not do that. That is, no. It's very important that everyone is given space to make their case and be able to express their opinions without having their character assassinated because they seem to think something differently to you and trying to instate that that's how we should operate our society I'm sure that feels good for whoever's trying to do it at the time, but what happens when it turns around and now someone with a different opinion to yours 
is the one that's in charge. Like, yeah. what? You're not a democracy. You're not a democracy anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So I think that's the biggest thing, and like one of the only things I'm really passionate about. I'm not particularly passionate politically. Uh, I don't have a particular uh, controversial cause that I have a big stance on or anything. I just don't really care that much. But what I do care about is that someone having one view on one thing does not mean that they are a good or bad person. Yeah. I really yeah. wonder if we're going to evolve as a people to not have a left and right anymore. No. Oh, how the, many the, generations I, yeah. will it take? The whole left and right thing is is not well, a how different thing. are they anyway? Like, and that's that's been the case for a while. Like exactly. what real differences can you can you really point to? Yeah. Uh, but something like politics with the left and the right and at a time in human history where people are feeling so lost and disenfranchised and like they don't have a tribe that there's so much uh, gripping onto a central idea or a, a stance because if you're someone who doesn't have much going on in their life or needs a team, you can have one instantly. I mean, like if you express an opinion on Twitter and you say, oh, you know, I'm a, Trump supporter um, or uh, I'm an anti-vaxxer and then you you get on Twitter or wherever and you join that team and you start attacking people or making comments, then your ego is getting fed. You're getting yeah. all that, all those positive feelings. They're not really based on anything, but the one thing human beings want more than anything else is connection. Yeah, And that's one of the things that we're lacking more than ever, as ironic as it is that Groups like Meta, Facebook are saying, oh, this is all about increasing human connection by keeping you away from each other and yes. then doing it virtually. Yes. So at a time when the connection's at an all-time low, we're searching for it aggressively in ways that are, have very negative consequences and are against, I think, our human nature because I think what we, we generally really want to work together and live in harmony. And most people are actually good people but they're just lost and they're afraid. And something like COVID, whether the people are conscious of it or not, it shows us that we are mortal and we don't control everything and nothing actually goes to plan or not everything goes to plan necessarily. And things might not actually turn out the way they're supposed to turn out. And that scares people a lot. So they grip onto a very strong political stance or whatever to try and make themselves feel like they have a modicum of, kind of control, feel better about it. The fact that we're all going to die. <laughs> Actually, that, that is a. <laughs> took that I whole think... drama lesson quite well over in it's Channel Seven. I didn't do drama in Year Twelve, so my mum was a drama teacher. There you I'm go. I'm a drama teacher. <laughs> yeah, well, see, my mum's just a drama queen, so there you go. <laughs> Oh my That's goodness. the best way. That is the best way I've heard that 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 explained. I think that 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 polarization and that feeling of, of alone is only exacerbated by the fact that we're living online. It's like what the hell, you know? I I get that's the it's one of the best ways I've heard that described. Oh, thanks. And if you can have a family like that, you decide mm. I'm taking this yeah. stance on this issue, and you got tens, hundreds of thousands, millions of people on your side all of a sudden, and yeah. it can even get to the point where you have some sort of celebrity status, not because you have skills or you actually offer anything, but just because you're able to post something that gets a lot of retweets or likes or views or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the other thing with Joe Rogan is, okay, so it's so hard to not say anything wrong in a space of three hours, right? Oh, yeah. So he's on nearly 2,000 podcasts of that length. And now people go back and say, oh, well, he said the N-word, mm. you know, four years ago, and they take it out of context and they're like, he's racist. Yeah. Like, come yeah. on. Like, yeah. you could yeah. make anything out of what he said. Yeah. Like, literally, he said a lot of stuff. Yeah. And it's, I like him and I think he's actually the ultimate journalist, which he may or may not like to hear <laughs> because it's never about him. And that's, yeah, that's, what his, that's, that's what his brilliance is and that's why I try to emulate myself. He tells a story, showcases what other people think because that's what the audience wants to hear. We want to consider their opinions, uh, where they're coming from, and he gets that out of people in the most effective way possible and asks all those questions so that's all aired out so that we can then decide for ourselves. That is journalism. That's yeah, what I, it should be. I agree. That's it is the the fact that he says, "Well, this isn't me speaking. This is my guest that's been saying this." And this is what the the critics don't seem to. I had a, an argument, not an argument, a discussion with uh, a couple of old schoolmates online about that, and, and it was it was like you. 
and I asked them, have, have you listened? Oh, no, why would I listen to that? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, exactly. And it's it's people who haven't listened and don't know who that is and then just will click on some clickbait and say, oh, okay, well, that's my my opinion now, but haven't actually delved into it at all that will agra- react the most aggressively. It's yeah. often people who know the least that are going to be the loudest about yeah. stuff. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, seen, it's seen that argument just going, yeah, that must be the true, and then just forwarding it to all your, all your, your tribe. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's not a healthy way of doing things. Yeah.